Hello, everybody. Jose Rodriguez. I am back again to talk about something that seems to um, come up quite often, especially those of you who choose to refill. If you are using only original inks and you're never going to refill, don't watch this video. But if you attempt or try to refill your original cartridges, which basically you can't do with Epson very easily, but you definitely can with some of the not recent Canon printers, okay? Well, you can, but the Pro 1000, the Pro 1, the Pro 10, the Pro 100, easily refillable. The Pro 1 has available chips that you can install on the same OEM cartridges, the same thing with these here. You can install the chips and then just very easily refill these cartridges. But the question always is, well, should I flush them before I refill them? And let me tell you the, the why you may want to do that and why you may not need to do that, okay? So the danger here is, well, so technically speaking, if I have a cartridge that, you know, I let go empty. In other words, first time I installed a cartridge, I let it go until the chip tells me I'm empty. A cartridge such as this, it will go empty here. You get a low warning, and then you will draw a certain amount of ink out of the sponge, and then it is declared empty. It is not fully dry in the sponge. It still has a certain amount of ink, a couple of milliliters of ink, because the printhead cannot be allowed to go dry, okay, on a Canon printer. So at that point, you remove it, you throw it in the trash, or you recycle it, or whatever you want to do with it or you choose to refill it. Now think about this. There is still original ink in here. And what are you gonna use? Well, we cannot find OEM bulk ink for these uh, types of printers, these dye ink printers. So we're gonna use a third party source. So what we are hoping happens is that we add ink here. It replenishes the sponge, okay? and nothing bad happens, okay? There's no reaction, no physical reaction. We seem to only worry about color, okay? That's all that's ever discussed when you go from OEM to a third-party source. You worry about color, you worry about longevity, but you don't seem to be thinking much about a physical reaction taking place between the remnant ink and the new ink. And what could possibly react? Well, just about any of the components of the liquid ink itself. In the case of dye inks, it's just a transparent dye that is then dissolved in a liquid media, a clear media. That media is made of uh, certain glycol ingredients, and so it has other components such as a, a bio side, to prevent any kind of contamination from fungal spores and that sort of thing. Because we're, we're gonna be constantly sticking needles into bottles and that sort of thing. So, you know, if you don't have a very clean working environment, you could contaminate your inks. So that biocide kind of helps prevent contaminations from biologicals, if you will. So what about pigment? Well, the pigment inks have basically the same type of ink base, the clear base that you add the pigment particles to. Well, can they react when you add them to a previously empty and used up cartridge? Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay, so what about this one? This one runs empty. This one, by the way, also runs empty. So not like this one. This one will have a lot more residual OEM ink in it than these two would because these you can run empty. This has a bladder inside and this is just an empty container and you can actually just run it till it's declared empty. It will not have any ink in it, by the way. So the residual amount of ink will be a lot less than in here. So if I was to add ink, the ink goes in here, it flows through a little opening at the bottom and it starts to feed the sponge from the bottom up. The bottom is the part that contains all of the residual ink. The upper part will have mostly air in it with some stain, okay? It'll be stained, of course. But will it react? Well, way back, 
before the newer generations of inks were available, yellow, yellow would react physically. But it had to be kind of a, a really um, dicey situation. I call it the perfect storm. So you had to reach a certain condition for that reaction, which was kind of a gelling reaction, thus the term yellow jello, okay? And so that would in, in immediately just clog your yellow channel on your Pro 100. And the only way you could, you know, keep that from causing further or possibly permanent damage is to stop printing, remove the printhead itself, and feed a cleaner through it. Like in this case, I use Windex. I was one of the first ones to experience this very scary uh, situation, by the way. So when did, when did I realize that I was having problems? Well, I had already refilled my yellow original once, no problem. Twice, no problem. The third time was the charm. That's when it occurred. And it, of course, you know, Murphy's Law, I was getting ready to fly to Orlando to visit my mom. And that's when it happened. I had been printing some photos for her of the kids, the grandson, the family. And I went upstairs, came back down, and I noticed all I could see was magenta and cyan being reproduced. No, obviously, I had no yellow. I ran a nozzle check. Yellow was clogged completely. I stopped. I panicked. So I removed the cartridge, and I put a cartridge filled with Windex in it. I ran it through it. Cleaning cycles only. Cleaning cycles, clean cycle, clean cycles until I cleaned the gelling, dissolved it, and pushed it out. And then I quickly put a yellow cartridge in it that I had already. What? And this is what we're going to get into. I had pre-flushed. So that's the question. Do we flush every time we go from OEM, regardless of the printer, to a third-party source? Well, if you can, I would recommend you do that. In some cases, it's, it's kind of physically impossible to do. Because say you only have one set of cartridges for the Pro 100. Flushing takes days. You cannot leave that printhead unattended without a cartridge installed. You will have even bigger problems later. So in the case of the Pro 100, uh, we're going to flush the one we know had problems. The other ones so far, so far, have not presented any kind of reaction problems. Okay. So here is the question that you need to ask yourself, especially if you're using some ink that is unproven. If you decide to go cheap and buy something from eBay straight from China, where you're going to get a, a quart of ink for $20, you know it's going to be junk, right? So would you take a chance, okay? Would you take a chance in filling one of these unflushed and possibly have a reaction from whatever remnant of original ink was with the new ink? So, you, you know, you have to ask yourself that. With these, the same thing, okay? Do I take a chance? Well, ink companies who sell for you refillers kind of should have done that testing for you, okay? Often, the cases, they really have not, all right? And they may have been starting with a flush set of cartridges so that they, they can then evaluate the actual inks themselves because until you have 100,000% sure you're flowing only that new ink, can you then make an evaluation as to its quality output wise. So most of the time you are going to do the opposite. You're going to just fill the cartridge with a remnant of ink in it and not a fully flushed cartridge. So the only way you can, you know, assure yourself that you will not have any kind of interaction between the two types of ink, because we don't know the exact formulation of any of these inks. We really don't. Okay. We don't know what the original inks exact formulation is and the replacement third-party inks exact formulation is and how they would react. It's like interactions between between drugs, you know, side effects. So we don't know what the actual side effects. For instance, this yellow ink for my Canon 8320, um, will it react with original yellow ink OEM? I really don't know, okay? 
we are going to see. <laughs> we are going to see. We're going to go ahead and fill those cartridges up and see whether they will react or not. All right, so, you know, all I can say is it's up to you. If you are able to start with a flush set of cartridges, then you know you're going to not have absolutely any residual previous ink, so you can be assured that you will not have any inter-ink reaction, okay, if that's a term. It'll just be the new inks. And what about the printhead? has a little bit of my residual previous ink. Well, that will be immediately flushed out. As soon as you install the cartridges and close that lid, it will run a purge cycle. That will be flushed out pretty much immediately. If you're worried, run a cleaning cycle after that, nozzle check, and then you can proceed to print and then evaluate the actual color quality of those new inks, okay? So only if you are absolutely sure that the inks will not react because the company you bought them from, like Precision Colors, they will determine whether there's any reaction between OEM and residual OEM, that is, and their new ink. They have already gone through that, believe me. I cannot say that for the other companies out there because I do not interact with them personally. All right, thank you so much. Let me drink a little coffee here. By the way, sublimated coaster. It's just a regular tile that you buy at the home center. It's an Aztec painting and a perfect place for your coffee mug to go on top of. Alrighty. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.